Hey everybody, what's up fam? This is Tree from treeoflogic.com. I have a lot of subscribers who live outside of America who are unfamiliar with some of the terminologies that I've used in a few of my videos. For example, Due to the SJWs, which now stands for Skeptic Justice Warriors, attacking my friend Rage for her video on race realism, I used the term democratic plantation when describing blacks on the left and the white liberals who cuddled them. My non-American subscribers told me that they were unfamiliar with this term and asked if I can explain what it means and why I use it. I thought about this for a while and I realized that not only was this an excellent question, but it would make for a great video. So today I'm going to educate you all on why black conservatives such as myself use the term democratic plantation when referring to the left. When it comes to the most educated, civilized and knowledgeable blacks here in America, the right is where you'll find us. Black conservatives are not only knowledgeable about black history, but we are well informed of the political history here in America. And when I teach the historical facts about the Democratic Party's racist relationship with black people here in America, you too will see why we as conservatives call left-leaning blacks slaves on a Democratic plantation. So let's begin. To understand the Democrats' racist and toxic relationship with blacks here in America, we must first look at the past. Let's start with slavery, because we as conservatives know that when it comes to the political parties here in America, no one loved their slaves more than the Democrats. The Democratic Party was founded in 1829 and has fought viciously against the abolishment of slavery. Not only did they defend slavery, but they fought to keep their slaves. You see, the Republican Party was founded in 1854 and it was known as the Anti-Slavery Party. This new party was determined to stop the Democrats from spreading slavery to the West and aimed at ending it completely. Unfortunately, during the year 1857, they had a little setback in the Supreme Court case, Dred Scott versus Sanford. Dred Scott was a slave in Missouri. From 1833 to 1843, he resided in Illinois, which was a free state where slavery was forbidden by the Missouri Compromise of 1820. After returning to Missouri, Scott sued unsuccessfully in the Missouri courts for his freedom. Scott claimed that his residence in free territory made him a free man. His case was appealed up to the Supreme Court, and that's when the court ruled that slaves are not citizens, but merely property. The seven justices on the Supreme Court who voted in favor of slavery were all Democrats. The two justices who voted against the ruling stating that Dred Scott was a citizen and not someone's property were Republicans. Fortunately, slavery was finally abolished after the Civil War in 1865 under the Commander-in-Chief Abraham Lincoln, who was also a Republican and known in history as the president who freed the slaves. Unfortunately, six days after the Confederate Army surrendered, John Wilkes Booth, a very salty Democrat, shoots President Lincoln in the head, thus killing him. Now here's where things get problematic. Abraham Lincoln's vice president was Andrew Johnson, who was a Democrat. And since President Lincoln was assassinated, Johnson took over as president from 1865 through 1869. But like typical Democrats, Johnson did not consider blacks as equal. And he, along with Democratic politicians, fought against the integration of newly freed slaves into Southern society. At the end of the year, during the month of December to be exact, the Democrats formed the Ku Klux Klan, which was headed by Confederate Army General Nathan Bedford Forrest, who served as the Klansman's first Grand Wizard. 
The initial mission of the KKK was to wage an underground operation of intimidation and violence directed at white and black Republican leaders. As time progressed on, the KKK was used as a militia against blacks and then became one of the most powerful domestic terrorist organization in the 60s by bombing black schools, churches, and killing black and white activists in the South. Speaking of killings in the South, all lynching of blacks were done by Democrats. Now let's get back to the Democratic President Andrew Johnson. After Republicans pushed to have the 13th Amendment passed in 1865, the Democratic Party, with the blessings of President Johnson, rebelled against the Republicans by passing black codes and Jim Crow laws, and they used the KKK to enforce these laws against black people. Now listen to this. On February the 5th, 1866, Republican Representative Thaddeus Stevens introduced legislation to Congress giving former slaves 40 acres and a mule to help them economically during the reconstruction of the South. But Democrats were like, no, -oh. and they along with President Johnson rejected this legislation. Two months later on April the 9th, 1866, the Republicans had enough of President Johnson's shenanigan after he vetoed the Civil Rights Act of 1866. The Republicans override Johnson's veto and pass the Civil Rights Act anyway, affirming rights of citizenship to freed slaves. But the Republicans weren't done. In order to force Southern states to extend state citizenship rights to former slaves, Republicans in the House passed the 14th Amendment on May the 10th, 1866 as did the Senate on June 8, 1866. Every member of the Democratic Party voted against it. All of them, all of them. Every last Democrat in Congress voted against the 14th Amendment. But thanks to the Republicans, the 14th Amendment was passed regardless. But the Democrats were still not having it. They refused to give blacks equal rights, so they continue enforcing Jim Crow laws. And because an overwhelming majority of blacks were voting Republican, Democratic vigilante gangs and the KKK continued to prevent blacks from voting. Some Southern states use poll taxes and literacy tests to prevent blacks from voting. Now, I need to inform you that the Black Code and Jim Crow laws restricted blacks from owning property and businesses in the South. So most blacks couldn't afford to pay the poll tax in order to vote. But that literacy test was ridiculous. Blacks were told that they had up to 10 minutes to complete a test that was basically impossible to pass. Also, if they got one answer wrong, they failed the test completely and were disqualified from voting. I don't care what race you are, no one could pass this test in the time allowed in addition to the questions given. I have a copy of this test on my personal website. Link to it is in the description box. Feel free to take it and you too will see how unreasonable it was for Democrats to force blacks to take an unpassable test in order to vote. So on July the 19th, 1867, Republicans passed more legislation protecting the voting rights of all free slaves after overriding President Johnson's vetoes. Do you see the trend here? The Democrats never liked black people and were resentful of releasing them as slaves. The Republicans always fought for the rights of blacks and did everything they could to protect them. Even billboards collected from that era proves this, with the left side saying, the Democratic platform is for the white man 
and the right side saying the Republican platform is for the Negro and the carpetbagger. By the way, carpetbagger is a derogatory term used by Southern whites when describing Northern whites who moved to the South after the Civil War. Now during the reconstruction of the South after the Civil War, 90% of the black population would vote for the Republican Party. Hundreds of black men were elected to Southern states legislators as Republicans. And the first 22 black men who served in the United States Congress were also Republicans. Even Frederick Douglass was noted as saying, I am a Republican, a black dyed in the wool Republican, and I never intend to belong to any other party than the party of freedom and progress. The Republican Party that Frederick Douglass upheld as the party of freedom and progress for black people back then is still the same Republican Party of today. But black people were tricked to think otherwise, and we'll get to that in a minute. So let's continue. On March the 30th, 1868, the Republicans had enough of President Andrew Johnson's racist agenda against black people and began impeachment proceedings. With Johnson finally out of office and the newly elected Republican president, Ulysses S. Grant put in, the Republican Party was finally able to get some legislation passed to protect black people. So in 1870, the Republican, not the Democrats, passed the 15th Amendment granting all men the right to vote regardless of race. 97% of the Democrats voted against it. So once Southern Democrats could no longer keep former slaves from voting, they attempted to intimidate them through KKK type vigilante activities and lynching. As a matter of fact, lynching of blacks by Democrats escalated during this time. So on June 22nd, 1870, the Republican Congress created the United States Department of Justice to safeguard the civil rights of blacks in the South. The Republican Congress passed another Enforcement Act on February the 28th, 1871, which provided federal protection of black voters. But these racist Democrats believed that they were above the law and those affiliated with the KKK were equally vicious against blacks in the North as they were in the South. For example, Octavius Cato was a black educator and civil rights activist in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was also a Republican and on election day, a white Democrat shot and killed him on his way to the voting booth. This was the extreme actions Democrats were willing to take in order to prevent blacks from voting for the Republican Party. On April 20th, 1871, the Republican Congress enacted the Ku Klux Klan Act outlawing any and all Democratic vigilante groups in addition to imposing heavy penalties against these terrorist organizations and use military force to stop them. Republicans held positions as president from 1869 through 1883, then again from 1897 through 1912. Under Republican rule, blacks begin to thrive in education and entrepreneurship. Some of the most successful blacks from this era were Booker T. Washington, Annie Malone, Frederick Patterson, and the famous Madam C.J. Walker, just to name a few. Thanks to the Republicans, blacks were now able to own businesses and property within the United States. But in 1913, Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, was elected president during World War II and reintroduced segregation, especially in the military. But General Dwight Eisenhower, a Republican, 
overcame Wilson's racist policy and made the decision to arm black soldiers with weapons. In 1952, black people learned their lesson with Wilson and come election day, they overwhelmingly voted for Republican Dwight Eisenhower as president. During his first year as president, Eisenhower ended segregation in the armed forces. And in 1954, when the Southern Democrats resisted desegregation, President Eisenhower sent the federal troops to the schools to force integration. The federal troops also escorted the black students to and from school. Oh, you're gonna love this one. In 1959, when Southern Democrats demanded that anyone who violated the new civil rights bill should be tried before an all-white Southern jury, <laughs> Republican Vice President Richard Nixon gave the deciding Senate vote to kill the Southern Amendment, which didn't sit too well with Senator Robert Byrd. Nixon was like, nice try, Democrats, but no. Now, speaking of Robert Byrd, this Democrat hated black people so much that in 1964, when President Eisenhower proposed civil rights bills to enforce the 15th Amendment, strengthening the rights of blacks to vote, Senator Robert Byrd filibustered the civil rights bill for 14 hours and 13 minutes. Now that's some serious dedication, racist. Even though Democrat senators filibustered the civil rights legislation nonstop for 71 days from March the 30th through June the 10th, President Lyndon Johnson persuaded the leaders of his party to support a compromise bill, which he signed on July the 2nd, 1964. By the way, Senator Robert Byrd was an active Klansman who not only opposed equal rights for blacks, but he was also against the desegregation of the South. And for those of you who didn't know, Senator Robert Byrd was the political mentor of, wait for it, wait for it, Hillary Clinton. Yes, Hillary, I keep tobacco sauce in my purse, Clinton. Most of the 60s was under the Democratic rule of President Lyndon Johnson, and this is when things started to go downhill for blacks. This was also when blacks switched from being loyal to their ally, the Republicans, to their enemy, the Democrats. In Ronald Kessler's book titled Inside the White House, he stated that President Johnson explained his new strategy for blacks here in America to two Democrat governors. And once finished, he said, I'll have those niggers voting Democrat for the next 200 years. And so far, he has been right. Johnson's strategy was called the Great Society, which included a set of domestic programs such as welfare, Medicare, HUD or Section 8 housing, food stamps, affirmative action. Basically, Johnson's Great Society was just a bunch of handouts and entitlement programs benefiting blacks in America. You see, Johnson realized that the Democrats were losing to the Republicans due to their unpopular anti-black policies and procedures. So he came up with this new strategy to bribe black people to overwhelmingly vote Democrat by giving them handouts in exchange for votes. However, the key is to give black people just enough to keep them coming back to the polls every two years. And this is why most blacks stay loyal to the Democratic Party today. Yeah, the Democrats have proven time and time again that they don't care about blacks. Just think about it. The 10 worst cities to live in here in the United States all have Democratic mayors and are heavily populated by blacks. The top 10 poorest cities in America are run by Democrats and heavily populated by blacks. And the most dangerous cities in America are run by Democrats and are heavily populated by blacks. 
here's something else I want you to keep in mind. Before President Johnson's war on poverty took place, the United States Census Bureau showed that less than 20% of black children were raised by single black mothers. Today, 73% of black children are raised by single black mothers. You see, the welfare state provide money and benefits to single black mothers without male leadership in the home. The Democrats also insert this victim status into the mentality of blacks by telling them that they are oppressed or they're victims of racism or white supremacy and that the police are here to racially brutalize them. These tactics are used to gain the majority vote from the black community and in return, Black people are given special treatment and handouts while being cuddled as victims. <sighs> the Republicans can't compete with this and they're not even going to try. So in conclusion, for 245 years, the politicians on the left physically enslaved blacks by forcing them to work on cotton plantations. But for the past 53 years, politicians on the left have mentally enslaved blacks with entitlement programs and handouts in order to keep them loyal to the Democratic Party. The worst part is, even if you tell black people all of this, most of them will shrug it off and continue to be loyal to their Democratic masters. And this is the reason why we as conservatives call blacks on the left slaves on the democratic plantation. This is Tree from treeoflogic.com. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and you like this content, be sure to subscribe and share this video. So thanks for taking the time to watch my video and I'll see you next time. Later taters. Thank <laughs> you.